Oh, hi there. Welcome to another episode of the Okanagan Gardener and Forager channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about mulch, why I use it and the different kinds I use and why I am often looking around for plants and well, mostly dead plants that I can lay around that I can put cover the dirt in my garden with. For me, one of the most important reasons that I started caring more about mulching was a shift in my thinking about the soil. Uh, the soil, I don't think about it uh, as much anymore uh, as a substrate or a growth medium, something that food comes from. Now I think of it more as part of the whole system. It, it is part of the whole system. So uh, as a part of that, the soil needs things to take care of it and nurture it too. So putting mulch on the top of it will keep the soil healthy. Uh, one other reason that is, I think, increasingly important now, uh, if you haven't heard, I've heard quite a bit of talk of soil erosion becoming a big problem. So mulch, and I'll go into more reasons, more specific details later, but mulching your soil can keep it healthy. And uh, if you listen to the news, you might have heard there's various supply chain disruptions. Uh, so it's getting hard to get all sorts of things, food and uh, fertilizer. Uh, being some of them. So using mulch can be a way you can take control of it yourself uh, to feed your soil for the long term and maybe become less reliant on things like fertilizers and get more productive gardens. Here are my black currants I planted uh, last year I think. Anyway, uh, my first reason that I think mulching is important is water retention. If you have a layer of mulch underneath your soil will probably be moist. And this is important for a number of reasons, but one that might be increasingly important right now, if you're concerned about it, climate change and uh, increasing droughts and water restrictions that might result from them. So if you've got more mulch, you don't have to worry about watering as much. My next reason why I use mulch is weed suppression. If you have a thick enough layer of mulch, what it can do is, if there's weed seeds underneath, it'll block them from getting light and choke them out and they won't be able to reach the surface. Some still might poke through. Like here, I've got some grasses. I think they're crab grasses or whatever you might call them. Some deep rooted plants can still make it through, but it's a lot easier to take them out if there's only one or two here and there. So also, uh, if you do use chemical fertilizers, by using a mulch, you can cut down on the amount that you need. Another reason to use mulch is to keep the soil temperature more stable. If it gets really hot, like it did last year, uh, it can keep the soil temperature from getting too hot. And also, when, when the soil is getting cold, the soil could rapidly get cold and things heaving is what it's called where the ground freezes and it pushes the can push the plant out of the ground so having a thick layer of mulch can slow that down basically it just keeps the soil temperature more stable my these poor little blueberries last year with those super intense heats we got i'm not sure but i like to think the thick layer of mulch i had might have saved them from being totally killed they got roasted pretty bad they were only it was their first year but they did survive Another reason to mulch is to protect the soil. The direct heat on the soil from the sun, even though we love the sun, uh, can deplete the soil of nutrients. So by covering it up, you're gonna prevent that depletion. And as an added benefit, when you have the soil covered, it creates a more hospitable environment for worms. And worms, of course, take the mulch and other things in the soil chew it up, eat it, and with their worm castings, or worm poop, it feeds the soil long term. It's not all sunshine and rainbows with mulches. There are some potential drawbacks. One of them is that as the mulch starts breaking down, the microbes that eat it can take up some of the nitrogen that's in the soil as part of their decomposition process. Uh, and so that might deplete the soil of nitrogen temporarily. You can 
take care of that by adding some more fertilizer or something like that if you want. And another potential drawback could be if you stopped mulching because uh, you create a, a more hospitable environment for the plants. So some of them might not be as deeply rooted. So if you removed the mulch suddenly, then they could, the roots could get burned or have some negative effects. So maybe to deal with that, just don't stop mulching. Couple basic points for how to mulch. Number one, don't smother the soil. Don't make the mulch too deep. It's, the soil still needs to breathe. A good general rule for mulch thickness is two to four inches thick. The next, next point, uh, don't mound the mulch. Don't make it like a volcano. Spread it evenly like a blanket. And uh, last one is don't let the mulch touch the stem. Keep keep uh, some distance between. It can cause all kinds of rot problems. So no mulch touching the stems. The first mulch that I like to use is wood chip mulch. One of the advantages of wood chip mulch is you can often get it for free or for cheap. And one of the other advantages that I like for it is that it stays in place really well. Some of the other mulches blow away or don't last long. So it's long lasting, stays in place. And one of the drawbacks is, as it breaks down, it uses up nitrogen in the soil. So what I do, for one, eh, sometimes I fertilize the plants, but I add things to it when I plant also, you know, compost and bone meal. So hopefully the soil is pretty nitrogen rich and that nitrogen depletion won't be noticed as much. The next type of mulch that I like to use in the garden is sawdust. And uh, yes... I like to keep these things on so I remember what type of blueberries I have. But anyway, uh, I like to use the sawdust with plants like blueberries because it makes the soil more acidic, which acid-loving plants like blueberries or maybe strawberries like. And another thing that's nice about it is, I think, it looks nice. It has a nice color, so it kind of looks nice in the garden. Uh, one drawback that I find from the sawdust is it blows away and... So I have to add more and it goes in some places where I don't really want it. And like the wood, because it is wood, it takes up some nitrogen. So I have to add some fertilizer to make up for that. But as it breaks down over time, that becomes less important. The next mulch that I like to use in the garden, and you have to look underneath the sorrel here to see it, is leaves. Leaves are, maybe in some people's opinions, arguably the best type of mulch. And one of the reasons is that the leaves break down quickly and they feed the soil. And you can think about it, the leaves come from tree roots, which bring up soil, bring up nutrients from deep down in the soil. So you take that, add it to your soil, it's really going to be good food for the future. And if they're chopped, chopped up, I try to break them up if I can, uh, then it will allow the water to get down to the soil and will also allow the air to move so it won't choke your soil. One of the drawbacks of using leaves for a mulch is that if they're whole, they can form mats, which can be impenetrable or not very penetrable for water and for air, so it can kind of choke the soil. So if you break it up, that'll take care of that. Oh yeah, and also leaves are usually free, so that's nice. The next type of mulch that I like to use are pine needles. These are from a Douglas fir, but it's not actually a fir, it's pine. But anyway, pine needles, they are great for a few reasons. One I like is that they can be, they're often cheap or free if you have a good source. For me, they came from my parents, so free. Uh, and one thing about them is they are good for acid-loving plants like blueberries or strawberries, so I like them on my strawberries, and by their shape, they are good for allowing water and air through to the soil. A drawback with them is, apparently, there is little worm activity under pine mulch. Another mulch that I like to use in the garden is alfalfa. And what I do, and I'll have a link to a video, I have a longer video about alfalfa, but I'll find alfalfa, cut it up, and use it as mulch. Alfalfa is often one of the plants that's used as straw, so, you know, this is kind of like a straw mulch, but I take it when it's alive. And what 
I like to do that for a few reasons. One, it's free, but also uh, as the leaves break down, it's kind of like a compost, so I get nutrients into the soil right away. And alfalfa is loaded with all kinds of nutrients, specifically ones that I'm interested in would be potassium, phosphorus, and others. So it's feeding the soil right away. Uh, when a drawback to the alfalfa is that it also apparently takes up some nitrogen as it breaks down. I think for me that that is mitigated because I take the alive alfalfa, so it's kind of like a living compost mulch. And the last mulch that I use, and it's kind of not really a mulch, but it kind of works out like one, is I use compost. And I've heard some sources will say that you should not mulch raspberries. That's what this is. This is my raspberry patch. So I've also heard that mulching raspberries is fine. So what I do is I take compost and I kind of dig it into the soil a little bit. And what ends up happening is the leftover parts as it breaks down, it breaks down, uh, you know, some of it breaks down quickly, but other stuff takes more time. So it kind of, you know, here's some eggshells. Some of it, I, I think it acts like a half mulch maybe, uh, you know, so the way it is, it's fairly broken up. So it lets water and lets water through easily and allows the soil to breathe, but also offers some protection from the sun and other things like that. Compost mulch. So that's an overview of why I mulch and some of the things I use for mulch. And uh, overall, what I would say is changing the thinking and getting, getting on the same side as nature here. We're feeding the soil and we're building it long term so that we can become less reliant on fertilizers, less reliant on what pesticides maybe less dependent on you know if we need less watering and as situations become more challenging maybe uh certain things you know with watering restrictions last year was a big one with the heat if we can build some more robustness robustness into our soil and into our gardens i think it'll benefit all of us so if you like the video how about leave a comment do you mulch what do you use uh, would you not use any of the ones that I recommended? And uh, thanks for watching.